Yo, what is good people? Ben from Lover of Tech and we are back with another video. This time it's a camera comparison. Pixel 7 Pro versus the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And yeah, this is gonna be a big one because we're really gonna see if the Pixel 7 Pro can match the Godzilla video quality that the iPhone brings. And we're gonna test it for all around camera for videos, photos, daylight and low light. Without wasting time, let's get into this camera comparison. Let's do a quick breakdown of the camera hardware and specs, starting with the Pixel 7 Pro. It does have a new 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 50 megapixel main sensor, and a new 5X 48 megapixel optical zoom with a 10.8 megapixel front facing camera. The iPhone on the other hand does have a 12 megapixel ultra wide with a 48 megapixel main sensor and a 12 megapixel 3X zoom with a 12 megapixel selfie for the front facing camera. The best way to watch this camera comparison is at the highest resolution in 4K with headphones for the audio. There will be chapters labeled in the video, but I highly recommend you watch through the whole video and use the chapters to refer back to at another time. With that out of the way, let's get into the camera comparison. So we are starting off on the selfie video camera and we are in 4K UHD. 60 frames a second video recording mode on the Pixel 7 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max and basically seeing how the image quality is like dynamic range especially colors detail and stabilization quick run Now we'll switch over to the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recording mode on the Pixel 7 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, seeing how the change in dynamic range happens, image quality, colors, detail, and also stabilization. Quick run. So we are still in the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode on both the front facing cameras on the Pixel 7 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. But the difference here is that you can see that the iPhone 14 Pro Max does have the cinematic video mode where you can see the background blur. Now I've stepped this down to F8 because the default 4.5 or F2.8 is just too blurry. But the option you do have with the iPhone is you can change the blur intensity before you finish recording and also after you actually finish recording and you can change the blur positions as well. Very, very impressive. Now we've started video on the rear facing cameras, the back facing cameras in 4K UHD, 30 frames a second video recorder mode on the Pixel 7 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Again, testing out the image quality, stabilization, detail, and dynamic range. Quick run. Let's switch to the ultra wide. Both have a nice smooth transition, especially on the iPhone, but also on the Pixel 7 Pro. Same again, quick run. Let's go to the 2X mode on both the Pixel 7 Pro, as well as on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. to the 5x slight change in jada and just the 3x on the iphone now both offer a very seamless video recording experience on the rear cameras but both do not allow you to switch to the selfie while recording on the same clip. But the Pixel does allow you to pause the video and continue on the same clip. And you can take pictures while recording on the same clip on both. Now switch over to the 4K UHD 60 frames a second video recorder mode, which finally for the Pixel 7 Pro is available on not just the main camera, but the ultra wide and also the new 5X zoom. The iPhone also can record 4K 60 on all the cameras, but the Pixel does have an ace up his sleeve. Now let's test the image quality first, stabilization. Quick run. Now, the Pixel 7 Pro, unlike other smartphone manufacturers, even with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, does not require you to stop recording on the same clip to switch to the other lens to record in 4K 60. Look here, ultra wide, 
smooth transition in 4K60. The iPhone shows you the ultra wide, but you cannot switch to it while recording. You do have to stop and switch, which we will do that right now. So we are now in 4K UHD, 60 frames a second, video recorder mode on the ultra wide. But for the iPhone, we did have to stop to transition. Whereas the Pixel 7 Pro continued on the same clip. Amazing. Quick run. So we're recording in 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recording on both the main cameras. Now I'm in the frame as a subject, seeing how the image quality, colors, detail, and dynamic range is like. And we should have switched to the ultra wide field of view now, so you can see how the image quality also changes with everything else with it as well. So we switched to 4K 60 frames a second, main camera, same thing again, seeing how the image quality on me as a subject, dynamic range, it's like. Pixel does allow you to switch to the ultra wide while you're recording on the same clip without stopping. So just watch that, but we will switch and stop and show the iPhone in the ultra wide as well. So switch the ultra wide on both and you can see it with the iPhone as well, seeing how the image quality is like on both. So we are now recording in the video portrait mode, the cinematic blur versus the cinematic video on the Pixel 7 Pro versus the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And remember with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, it's in 4K. So it being in 4K is good for the quality as well as obviously what you can do is change the blur before you start recording. And the iPhone allows you to change the blur after you finish recording and the position of the blur as well. Let me know how you think of the image quality. So we switched to the 3x zoom on the iPhone 14 Pro Max for the video portrait mode, the cinematic mode, and the pixel is limited to just the main camera sensor. Now we're in the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode on the Pixel 7 Pro versus the iPhone 14 Pro and seeing how the low light performance is like. Switch into the ultra wide. Let's pop to the main. We're going to go to the 2x. 2x. x to 3x to 1x to the 1x now we're in the 4k UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode on the selfie and seeing how the low light performance is like Let's start things off with the daylight photos, kicking things off with the landscape images with the ultra wide. The only real difference I'd notice is that the Pixel 7 Pro pushes for more visibility and details in the shadows, while the iPhone 14 Pro has slightly more detail and a slightly more vibrant image. When moving over to the main wide sensor, it practically became a pixel people more as it was really hard to tell the difference between the two as the results are very much the same. Comparing the 2X mode, I would say I prefer the overall look on the Pixel 7 Pro, but the iPhone does look to have slightly better processing. When comparing the 5X zoom on the Pixel 7 Pro 
versus the free X zoom on the iPhone 14 Pro. It's clear that the Pixel 7 Pro is producing a better image and also has the advantage of further reach. These last set of landscape shots further showcase what we've seen before when looking at the ultra wide, the wide and the 2X images with the Pixel 7 Pro pushing for better shadows while the overall detail from the ultra wide and the main sensor looks great on the iPhone with better processing in the 2X zoom mode. With the extended zoom ranges, the iPhone 14 Pro is limited to a maximum 15X digital zoom, while thanks to Google's Pro Level Zoom, working alongside their Super Res Zoom tech, you get a cleaner image with further reach up to 30X. Time for some selfie images, and as great as both phones are doing, I definitely prefer the look of the Pixel 7 Pro, thanks to the better skin tones, good detail, better control of HDR, and a wider field of view when switching to the 0.7X mode. For portrait mode, things favor the Pixel 7 Pro again. Plus, you do have the option of shooting portrait selfie in a wide angle in the 0.7X mode, which is something you cannot do on the iPhone. Moving over to the rear cameras with me as a subject of focus, as good as both images are from the ultra wide, I prefer the results of the final image from the Pixel 7 Pro. The main wide sensor is the same, as this is mainly down to holding good detail and better skin tones on the Pixel 7 Pro. In the 2X zoom mode, the Pixel 7 Pro again looks much better as the iPhone 14 Pro has heavily over sharpened the image and does not handle HDR well compared to the Pixel 7 Pro. When looking at portrait mode, the 1X view on the Pixel 7 Pro behaves more like a 1.33X crop compared to the wider field of view on the iPhone 14 Pro. I still like the overall look of the Pixel 7 Pro thanks to the more intense blur and better colors. The 2X and 3X portrait mode on the other hand is much better on the iPhone 14 Pro and still sees the same over sharpening on the Pixel 7 Pro we had from before. Macro mode finally sees its first introduction to a Pixel flagship device with the Pixel 7 Pro and it looks to work really well with full control with the on-screen toggle to enable or disable it. Let's take a look at some low light images starting with the landscape shots with the ultra wide. Both do struggle here. The Pixel 7 Pro does have a slightly brighter image at the cost of more noise, while the iPhone 14 Pro preserves a more nighttime look at the cost of a softer image. When moving to the main wide sensor, both phones produce great results with a slightly higher exposure and cooler look on the Pixel 7 Pro. But I do actually prefer the look of the iPhone 14 Pro. The 2X zoom mode looks great on both, but I do prefer the more nighttime look of the iPhone 14 Pro. In the 5X and the 3X zoom mode, although the iPhone has less reach, it does look to have better processing with the ability to see more of the written text. In this extreme low light situation, the ultra wide on both phones are not usable or visible at all. The main wide sensor on the other hand, without night mode active, the iPhone 14 Pro is a lot more visible compared to the Pixel 7 Pro. Night mode is the difference maker and takes the ultra wide on both phones to a much more usable final image. The main wide sensor benefits from night mode the most, especially on the Pixel 7 Pro. And you do have an astrophotography mode on the Pixel 7 Pro with a four minutes capture time using a tripod for an even cleaner nighttime image. With the low light selfies, I captured in a normal mode then with night mode, and then with the front screen flash. And I've replicated the same for portrait mode as well. Now, the only issue with the iPhone 14 Pro is that you cannot do night mode and portrait mode on the selfie at the same time. With that in mind, overall, across the board, the selfies from the Pixel 7 Pro are much preferred. These last set of low light images of the rear cameras with me as a subject of focus, without night mode active, the ultra wide struggles on both with even more noise on the Pixel 7 Pro with slightly more detail on it. The main wide sensor on the other hand favors the Pixel 7 Pro with a cleaner and more detailed image. Now the 2X mode is a struggle on both with a soft looking image for the final output. With night mode active, the ultra wide image on the Pixel 7 Pro is overall better keeping a more detailed image of myself. Same goes to the main wide sensor as skin tones and colors are much nicer on the Pixel 7 Pro. The 2X zoom mode in this case with night mode does look a lot better on the iPhone 14 Pro. And without night mode active, portrait mode is cleaner and less noisy on the Pixel 7 Pro. Now the 2X portrait mode produces better results on the iPhone 14 Pro with more detail overall. Night mode with portrait mode active cleans up the image well on both. And it really does come down to which one you prefer, which in this case for me 
is the Pixel 7 Pro. Let's summarize the video performance starting with the front facing camera. As good as video is on the iPhone 14 Pro selfie, especially when it comes to overall detail, the HDR performance in 4K60 specifically is very poor compared to the Pixel 7 Pro. And even when you consider the color rendition and stabilization, the 4K60 video on the selfie is much better, in my opinion, on the Pixel 7 Pro. To get the best HDR performance for selfie video, I definitely recommend using no more than 4K 30 frames a second on the iPhone 14 Pro. One advantage you do have with the iPhone is the ability to record video portrait mode on the selfie camera, which is sorely missing on the Pixel 7 Pro. And you can now record that in 4K with full control over the blur intensity before and after recording. Video on the rear camera is an interesting one. Although I'm very impressed with the improvements to video on the Pixel 7 Pro, especially now that you can shoot in 4K60 on all the rear cameras and you have the ability to switch between all the rear cameras while recording in specifically 4K60 on the same clip and even pause and continue on the same clip. When you actually look at the final image quality of the video being recorded, the iPhone 14 Pro is just leagues ahead. And as much as I'm not really surprised by this, I was expecting a cleaner image on the Pixel 7 Pro to compete with the iPhone 14 Pro. When you also consider the quality of the video portrait mode on the Pixel 7 Pro with the cinematic blur limited to 1080p and only on the main sensor, the iPhone's ability to shoot 4K cinematic mode on the 3x zoom as well as the main sensor with full control of the blur before and after the fact of shooting. I would still say video overall is better on the iPhone 14 Pro. For nighttime video, although the Pixel 7 Pro has good exposure and it's not far behind, the iPhone 14 Pro overall has a nicer and cleaner image. I usually still wouldn't recommend using the ultra wide as you do lose a lot of light and detail. I was still low key surprised how well the iPhone 14 Pro held up. Microphone quality for audio is great on both. With Speech Enhancer working on more shooting modes on the Pixel 7 Pro, you are getting better voice isolation with it. That is it for me with this ultimate camera comparison between the Pixel 7 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And that's it for me, Ben from Lover of Tech. If you enjoy videos like this, you know exactly what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're part of Team TLS, the Tech Lover Squad, so you don't miss any future videos on the channel. I hope you're all safe during this time. I will catch you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.